Hello everyone and welcome to Kiru's online lectures. I am Kira Jantani and today's topic is Amin's part 4. See in part 1 we studied introduction, classification and nomenclature. In part 2 we studied preparation of Amin. In part 3 we studied physical properties of Amin. Now in this part we are going to study chemical properties of amines. Now, when we talk about chemical properties of amine, as we have over here NH2, the difference in electron negativities between nitrogen and hydrogen and also the presence of shared pair of electron over nitrogen makes this amine reactive. Now, number of hydrogens attached to the nitrogen atom that decides the course of reaction. So we call primary, secondary and tertiary amines. Now these amines, they basically behave as nucleophiles. Now why they behave as nucleophile? It is due to the presence of unshared electron pair. So amines, they are basically basic in nature because they react with acid to form salts like we have R NH2 with lone pair of electron, it reacts with acids to form salt that is NH3 plus X minus. Whether it is alkyl, amine, alkyl amines or it is aryl amines, both of them are basic in nature because both of them form, forms salt. So amines on treatment with bases like Na, NaOH, they also forms parent amine like we have salt over here R NH3 plus X minus when it reacts with o my OH minus it forms over here R NH2 plus H2O plus X. These amines they are soluble in water but they are insoluble in organic solvents like ether. Now, when we talk about the basic character of amines, the basic character of amines can be understood by the values of their Kb and Pkb. Now, as we know, we have amine over here, NH, RNH2, which on hydrolysis will form RNH3 plus and OH minus. So, when we find the value of Kb over here, we will get RNH3 plus into OH minus upon RNH2. Now this we know over here PKB if we have to calculate it is minus log of KB. So higher the value of KB, smaller the value of PKB. Thus if we know the KB of the values, so we can find the basicity of the, um, of, the of particular amines. So, aromatic amines, if we talk, they are basically weaker bases than ammonia. It is because when we talk about aromatic amines, there is a C6H5NH2. It is weaker base than ammonia. The reason behind it is the electron withdrawing nature of this aryl group makes it less basic than ammonia. Now, coming on to the comparison between alkena amines versus ammonia. Now, when we talk about alkena amine, that means alkyl group is attached to amines with a lone pair. When H plus ion attacks over here, there occurs the formation of RNH3 plus. Similarly, when we have ammonia over here, here it is HH with lone pair. So H plus, we will get over here HNH plus H plus H. So if we see over here in alkyl group, there is electron releasing nature of alkyl group, which pushes electron towards nitrogen, thus making this unshared electron pair more available for sharing, for sharing with proton. But when we talk, when we see about this ammonia, in ammonium ion, which is formed by amine, it is, it is stabilized 
due to dispersal of this plus i effect of alkyl group so thus over here the plus i effect of alkyl group stabilizes this structure so therefore we say alkyl amines are stronger bases than ammonia now when we talk about the basic nature of alkyl alkyl aliphatic amines this basic nature is directly proportional to increase in number of alkyl group that means tertiary are more basic then secondary then primary and then ammonia but this trend is not regular in aqueous state because in aqueous state pkb values uh, basically changes and because of that electron releasing effect of alkyl group is not only stabilized by plus i effect there occurs solvation property also that is with water molecule thus in that case greater the size of ion lesser will be sol solvation and less stabilized is the ion so when we talk about aqueous state primary is more basic then secondary and then tertiary which is opposite to inductive effect as we see over here now this was first thing then if alkyl group now we have two alkyl group one is ch3 and other one is c2h5 when the alkyl group is small there is no steric hindrance but in case of alkyl group when it is bigger than ch3 there will be steric hindrance due to hydrogen bonding so then there occurs change of basic strength now let's suppose if we have c2h5 alkyl group so secondary amine is more basic than tertiary and then we have primary then ammonia similarly with um, methyl group here it will be secondary but since there is no in steric hindrance over here then comes primary and then it is tertiary then coming on to ammonia so basically over here there is subtle interplay of inductive effect that means there are three effects involved over here inductive solvation and steric hindrance which decides basic strength of alkyl amines in the aqueous state due to all these three factors inductive effect solvation effect and steric hindrance due to all these three effects the basic character of these amines is decided aryl amines versus ammonia as we know in aryl amines here it is nh2 group attached to benzene ring now because of this as soon as over here h plus ion will attack we will get anilinium ion this anilinium ion is basically obtained by accepting proton and which have only two resonating structures this is known as anilinium ion now proton acceptability or basic nature of aniline or any aromatic amines it is less than that of ammonia so thus basicity of arnh2 that is aromatic amine is less than ammonia if in case of like we have substituted amines we have methoxy group methyl group so these groups are electron releasing group electron releasing group basically increases basic strength whereas we have no2 so3h which are electron withdrawing group they decreases the basic strength of amine moving on to next chemical property which is alkylation now we have over here nh2 which on treatment with hcl here when nh2 uh, alkyl amine is treated with nh2 so here basically what happens we get ammonia uh, 
ammonium salt alkyl ammonium salt that is rnh3 plus cl minus next coming on to acylation so when we talk about acylation so we have acylation is performed with um, acid chlorides anhydrides and esters so aliphatic or aromatic amine when they react with acid chlorides anhydrides and esters this reaction is known as acylation so c2h5nh2 on reaction with ch3cocl here this h and cl will be removed and thus we will get c2h5nhcoch3 plus hcl similarly if we have c6h5nh2 and it reacts with ethanoic anhydride which is ch3coo so here what happens this h and ch3co group will be removed and we'll get over here c6h5nhcoch3 this is known as n phenyl ethanamide so this is how acylation reaction takes place moving on to next which is carbyl amine reaction aliphatic and aromatic amines on heating with chloroform and ethanolic potassium hydroxide solution they form isocyanides or carbyl amines which are foul smelling substances now this secondary and tertiary amines they do not show this reaction and this reaction is known as carbyl amine reaction or we can say isocyanide test which is basically a test for primary amines so here basically what happens this amine reacts with chloroform and ethanolic potassium hydroxide that is 3 koh and then will heat it so aliphatic and aromatic primary amines on heating with chloroform and ethanolic potassium hydroxide so here we will get ch3nc plus 3 kcl plus 3 h2o so this reaction is carbyl amine reaction or isocyanide test moving on to next which is reaction with nitrous acid so basically we have three types of amines primary secondary tertiary so when we talk about primary amines like rnh2 they react with nitrous acid to form aliphatic diazonium salts which is unstable and liberate nitrogen gas and alcohols so when it reacts with hno2 in which is basically mixture of nano2 plus hcl we get over here diazonium salt which on hydrolysis forms roh plus n2 plus hcl now this this is how primary amine reacts when we talk about aromatic amines so we have c6h5nh2 these aromatic amines react with hno2 at very low temperature and it forms diazonium salts so nano2 plus hcl 273 to 278 kelvin we get over here c6h5n2 plus cl minus plus nacl plus h2o now reaction of secondary and tertiary amine with nitric nitrous acid it occurs in a different manner which we will be discussing in our next video next is reaction with aryl sulfonyl chloride now what is aryl sulfonyl chloride so it is c6h5so2cl so when amine that is c2h5nh2 reacts with aryl sulfonyl chloride c6h5so2cl so here h and cl will be removed and we will get c6h5so and here it will be nh c2h5 
so this is basically n ethyl benzene sulfonamide now in this reaction secondary amine will also give this reaction because they are having hydrogen but tertiary amine do not react with aryl sulfonyl chloride because it doesn't have hydrogen which is to be replaced with cl next coming on to electrophilic substitution reaction so aniline is basically resonance hybrid of wife structures now where is um, here the maximum electron density is on ortho and para position to the nh2 group this nh2 group is ortho and para directing and a powerful activating group now when we talk about bromination so aniline this is we have aniline over here it reacts with bromine water at room temperature thus when it reacts with bromine water at room temperature we get 2 4 tribromoaniline now the main problem which is encountered during electrophilic substitution reaction is that of very high reactivity now substitution basically tends to occur at ortho and para position if we have to prepare mono substituted aniline derivative now coming on to nitration so nitration of aniline yields terry oxidation products in addition to nitro derivatives moreover in the strongly acidic medium aniline is protonated to form aniline ion and that is meta directing so here we have aniline when we are performing nitration uh, we get uh, in presence of hno3 h2so4 r288 calvin here since it forms aniline ion which is meta meta directing so along with ortho para we get significant amount of meta derivative also so thus nh2 no2 the para product which we get is 51% then we get meta product meta nitroaniline which is 47% and then we get ortho nitroaniline which is 2% so in today's video we studied chemical properties of amines hope you guys are finding videos helpful so do like share and subscribe the channel thank you